Iris. Thanks, Ned. Um, I'd like to tell you about uh, some of the who and the what of WISE. Uh, first, the who. We're a team of uh, astronomers uh, from academia and engineers from academia, uh, NASA laboratories, and, and industry that came together in 2002 to successfully win a competition to build WISE. Um, uh, we have people from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory where we manage the project and where we will do mission operations. We have uh, astronomers from uh, California Institute of Technology uh, where uh, at the infrared processing and analysis lab we will process the millions of pictures that Ned just described we're going to take for WISE. We have two major subcontractors uh, who are very important to our project. Ball Aerospace Corporation in Boulder, Colorado uh, built the spacecraft for WISE and the Space Dynamics Laboratory of uh, Logan, Utah built the instrument for WISE. So I'm going to shift now from who we are. Let me just say one more thing. We are, uh, we are a part of NASA's Explorers program. That program is, has a long and, and successful history and is managed out of the Goddard Space Flight Center. Um, we, we, uh, we have a satellite model here that I'm going to use to illustrate the basic design of WISE. This is about a tenth scale. The satellite weighs about 1,400 pounds. Uh, it's got two major pieces. It's got an instrument. Uh, which is a, basically a, a telescope within a thermos bottle. I'll tell you more about that in a bit. And a spacecraft down below, uh, which contains all of the functions required to power, control, uh, communicate, uh, calculate uh, uh, the activities of the spacecraft once in orbit. Um, it's got a solar panel that provides all the power we need, about uh, 500 watts in orbit, and, um, and a large antenna that will point to the uh, tracking data relay satellite system that NASA operates in an orbit much above us. So uh, on my first graphic, I have a picture of the real WISE. Uh, this is the satellite in a uh, test chamber at Ball Aerospace Corporation in Boulder, Colorado, uh, where, where the satellite was exposed for about two weeks to the space environment. Uh, uh, the thermal environment from the sun and from and, and the vacuum environment of space. That test went very well. There you can see a ball aerospace technician uh, hooking up some uh, temperature transducers to the spacecraft. And you can also see it's sort of obvious that little red thing there. That's a cover over one of our two star trackers. We, in fact, WISE is one big telescope and two little telescopes. Uh, this star tracker takes images, visible images of the sky which it compares to, Im to uh, images in its computer and relays information to the uh, spacecraft computer as to where the spacecraft is pointing. That's very important for WISE to achieve its objective of pointing precisely at these uh, million places in the sky where, where it will take its pictures. So uh, in the next photograph, I'm switching gears now to the, uh, to the instrument. Uh, here you see a technician assembling the instrument at the Space Dynamics Lab in Logan, Utah. Uh, you're looking at WISE from the point of view of a star, uh, the photon just before it enters the telescope of WISE. Uh, you're looking at the primary mirror. It's, uh, it's gold-coated aluminum. Uh, behind it, there are uh, 12 other uh, gold-coated aluminum mirrors that image uh, the stars onto uh, the eyes of WISE, one of which I have here, uh, this is a, uh, a uh, infrared array detector. It's a one mega, megapixel array. Uh, it doesn't look that much different from your digital camera array if you have a really uh, nice one, a big array and a, a new digital camera. Uh, but it's very specialized. It's designed to, to, uh, to uh, convert infrared energy into electrical signals. And so these arrays are behind this telescope that I described. And both the telescope and this array need to be cooled to minus 440 degrees Kelvin so that, so that these objects that our astronomers want to detect uh, can be detected rather than the, det the heat from the, the, the objects themselves. We do that by, by cooling the telescope with a, uh, a cryostat. And on my next picture, you can see uh, that cryostat being filled with the coolant, which is uh, a hydrogen gas that's converted to liquid. And, uh, and ultimately then to a solid. We have now 40 pounds of solid hydrogen in our, in our cryostat. Some people think it looks like R2-D2 without wheels. 
It's kind of a funny looking thing. It's a lot of complicated plumbing to do this job. Uh, the job is complete now. And, and so we're ready to go and we're really excited about it. Uh, uh, we're going to uh, move our satellite out to the pad, to the launch pad in, at uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base in California on Friday morning, early in the morning, when the wind doesn't blow, we hope, and, uh, and launch no earlier than December 7th uh, this year. So with that, once we're in orbit, uh, we're uh, at, at about a 320-mile uh, circular orbit from which uh, the astronomers will be making their observations and and Dr. Amy Meinzer, who's our deputy project scientist, will tell you how much fun those are going to be. All right. Thanks, Bill. So I'm really excited to get to tell you about some of the science that WISE is going to do. It's, uh, it's great that we're so close to launch. And as uh, Ned and John have said, WISE is an all-sky infrared survey. So you could kind of think of it as the Google map to the universe. In addition to finding some of the most distant objects in the universe, it's also going to find some of those that are closest to our own home our, in our own solar system, and that is the asteroids. So in my next animation, you can see a map of our solar system. It's a bird's eye view. And you can see that most asteroids in the solar system live in the main asteroid belt, which is between Mars and Jupiter, and that's between the red and the purple lines in the graphic. But there are some asteroids whose orbits take them close to the Earth's, and you can see those as the red dots here in the animation. Now, it turns out that WISE is going to be finding about 100,000 new asteroids in the main asteroid belt, and we expect it's going to find several hundred new asteroids that get to, uh, get to close to Earth's orbit, and we call these the near-Earth objects. So these are asteroids and comets whose orbits take them close to Earth's orbit. So 100,000 new main belt asteroids and a few hundred new near-Earth objects. Now, as uh, Ned mentioned, all objects that are hotter than absolute zero emit some amount of infrared radiation. In fact, I'm pouring out infrared light right now as I sit here. And in particular, objects that are close to room temperature emit very strongly in infrared light. So you can imagine that if you take an asteroid and you put it at the same distance from the sun as the Earth, it's going to emit a lot of infrared light. It's going to glow very brightly in infrared. In my next animation, you can see some sample data taken from another NASA infrared telescope called the Spitzer Space Telescope. And this shows four frames of actual data of an asteroid. And it's on a loop, which is why it keeps jumping back. But you can see the asteroid stands out very distinctly in the infrared data. It shows up as a red dot that's moving. It's very bright in the infrared, and it looks quite different than the stars in the image. And because it's moving, it's also very easy to detect. So infrared is a very powerful way of finding new asteroids. Now, in, in fact, Spitzer was only able to survey about 1% of the entire sky in detail. So if you want to find large numbers of near-Earth objects, like the asteroids and comets that we expect to find with WISE, you need to survey a much larger area. And that's what WISE is going to do. So as I said, uh, we'll be finding lots of dark asteroids with WISE. Now I have here two rocks. And one of these rocks is sort of a light and shiny color. And the other one is a much darker color, sort of like a piece of coal. To a visible light telescope, the light asteroid over here is going to show up more distinctly because it reflects a lot more sunlight. Whereas this dark object over here, even though it's larger, would appear much fainter to a visible light telescope. But in infrared light, both of these objects look equally bright. And in fact, uh, this dark asteroid over here may stand out more to an infrared telescope because what you're seeing is the heat that's being radiated from the asteroid. So WISE is going to find a lot of these dark, hidden objects that are easily missed by visible light telescopes. So dark asteroids can't hide from WISE. And WISE will also tell us something about the composition of the population of asteroids, both in the near-Earth regime and also in the main belt. It's going to give us some information as to whether asteroids are typically light and fluffy like a marshmallow or heavy metal. So it'll tell us about composition as well as the true numbers of asteroids. So in this sense, because it will help us find the dark, hidden asteroids, and because it's going to tell us about the asteroids' compositions, WISE is going to help us prepare for the future so we can better plan mitigation campaigns for uh, potentially hazardous asteroids. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to the mission's project scientist, Dr. Peter Eisenhardt. Thanks, Amy.